Hi everyone, welcome back to my AP Calculus class. Today I start chapter 7 applications of integration to geometry. The first application of integration is about area, right? So because definite integral literally means area under the curve with the x-axis, but sometimes y-axis. I'm going to talk about that application. So basic concept is this. There is x, y, coordinates plane and there's a function graph suppose this is y equals fx and then here is a here is b when you find area under the curve of y equals fx with the x-axis between a and b i mean this is shaded regions area right they should shade the regions area is integral a to b fx dx that is a really basic concept but what if the function graph is under the x-axis okay something like this the graph is under the x-axis a is here b is here how can you find the area of this shade region because the function graph is under the x-axis integral a to b f x dx that value is going to be negative, less than zero. Okay? So integration value in this case is negative number. But area should be always positive, right? So in this case, put the negative sign in front of integration. So area is equal to negative, in, negative integral a to b fx dx because integration value is negative. So we use a definite integral to find area, but definite integral value is not equal to area in many cases. If some part of graph is under the x-axis, that part area is going to be negative area, right? Okay, be careful for that. And then I keep going this chapter. Let's go. Look at this figure. This is the y cross fx graph. A is here, B is here. And to find that area under the curve from A uh, to B, there was integral A to B, fx, dx. As we learned RLAM, LRAM, like a Riemann sum, so we just, uh, just found the ap ap uh, approximation area of, under the curve using rectangles area or sometimes trapezoid or method, which means we're going to use a trapezoid area but suppose it's a rectangular method okay so if you draw some rectangles area right f equals a can if you use l r a m you're going to find that rectangles area plus next rectangles area and then suppose you made n rectangles like this so uh, that is in uh, sigma n equals or k equals 1 to n because there are n rectangles here sum of all these n rectangles here right and then that length i mean with length of the tiny length of that rectangle is uh, b minus a over n because it's from a to b so the whole length is what b minus a from a to b and then i separate into n sub intervals so the length of each subinterval is going to be b minus a over n, right? So that is b minus a over n. That is length of each rectangle. Now, how can you find that width or height of that rectangle? That is y value, right? This y value. This is f of a. What about second one? That is f of. It's not a. This point, right? This point. This point is what? A plus B minus A over N. So it's F of A plus B minus A over N K. Okay? If K is 0, F of A. If K is 1, second rectangle is height. If K is 2, A plus a plus delta x delta x twice that's why if k is two third rectangles third rectangles height 
this, this rectangle's height, right? So, sum of all these. But what about if we make infinite number of rectangles? Just put limit and approach is to infinity. So this sum of infinite number of rectangles area should be equal to integral f of integral a to b f x dx. So you have to understand these two forms, comparing these two forms. Some AP exam ask you to change that limit sigma form to integral form this way, right? Sometimes it asks you mm, integration form to limit sigma forms. So you have to understand that Riemann sum. May we can solve some problem exercises, practice problems, okay? Let's go, keep going. Mm. All right. Sometimes we have to find area, okay? Uh, with y axis, not with x axis. This area, right? It's the same concept, but the function is not y equals fx form, x equals g of y form. You can use the same concept, integral a to b, this a and b value, y values, right? And then gy, y function, dy. This represents the area of, yeah, under the curve with y axis. If the graph is right side, that must be positive value. But if graph is left side, this side, and then that a to b, that area is a negative area, right? In this case, if there's x equals f of y, integral a to b f of y dy, that is negative value. So to find the area, put the negative sign. Depends on where is the function graph, right side from the y-axis or left side from the y-axis. Okay? And the next concept to find the area is area between curves. Between curves is kind of easier because uh, we don't have to think about the curve is mm, under the x-axis or over the x-axis. Just a higher function minus lower function integral is between two curves. So if suppose there's a function, okay, it's good you can print the bottom. See the figures N7-4, fx, this is fx, and then this graph is gx. That makes sense, right? This point is a, b, so this point is a. And this point, the intersection point of fx and gx is c. And then the last point is e, is e, right? e. That is e. Okay, so from a to c, from a to c, uh, we're going to find that area between these two curves. And in this case, fx function is a higher function than gx graph, right? So integral this area, integral a to c, higher function minus lower function. That is kind of basic concept to find that area between two curves. So fx minus gx. Because fx graph is higher than gx graph dx plus, what about this part? From c to e, integral c to e, which function is higher? gx function is higher than fx, right? They switched at x equals c. So from c to e, gx minus fx. Because gx graph is higher than fx graph. And then if you add this to integration value, you're going to find that this sheet is whole area, right? So just the basic concept is what? Between two curves. Uh, to find the between, area between two curves. Just a higher function minus lower function. What about y-axis? Mm. The same thing. Right side function minus left side function. To find the between two curves looks like this, this area. There are two functions. So x equals x squared plus 2 and x equals 7. Which function is more right side? x equals 7 is more right side. So or how can you find that integral? I can have area between these two graphs. Integral a to b, but this point is 2. This point is 7, but I don't know what is the y value. If x equals 7, 
This is negative root 2, 5, and this point is root 2, 5. So we have to use y values. How can you find the root 2, 5? Plug in x equals 7 in this equation. 7, so 7 equals y squared plus 2. So find the y value from this equation, plus or minus. Radical 5, negative root 2, 5, 2, root 2, 5. More right side of function is x equals 7 minus more left to find the function y is squared plus 2 dy exactly same concept as x axis right so for the x axis yeah higher function minus lower function for the y axis more right side of function minus more left side of function that integral value represents area between two curves okay I will go to examples now. Well, today I, I saw some examples, not all, and then the next video I keep going, keep solving example problem. What about example one? Just you can find, evaluate this. Evaluate, okay, integral zero to one, e to the negative x squared. Mm. So you you cannot you cannot find the integral of e to the negative x squared because it is not your substitution problem. It is not integration by part. It is not partial fraction. So uh, I have an idea. That's why it's a calculator problem. So you can use a calculator sometimes. You have to understand how to find integral. Okay? So I usually use graph instead of the math part. So I just usually draw y equals e to the negative x squared graph. And then graph it. And then second button. Usually I use it this way trace button second trace and then you choose the number seven and then input lower bounds that means input zero enter and then upper bounds one enter and then the screen says that area right so i usually use these ways okay if you use this way you can find the zero point seven four seven it's just a practice calculator okay let's go to example two in this figure, area under this graph, right? Under a negative x force plus x to the second plus x plus 10 and above x axis, which means find this shady reasons area, right? The so two x intercept is given and p to q. So that formula is what? Integral p to q and then that function negative x to the fourth plus x squared plus x plus 10, that function dx. That is the area. Because that function graph is above the x-axis, integration value is the area, right? Okay. And how can you find this p and q? You can use a calculator again, right? Input y equals this function, and then second trace, and then you're gonna find the zeros, choose zeros, and then uh, left limit, right limit, enter, and say exact value of p and q. You can use this p and q. If you use a calculator, your calculator says what is p and q. It doesn't say that, right? Yep. Anyway, you can find the zero of, zeros first of the zeros of the function first using calculator and then use those two numbers. Okay, as a low limit and upper limit. And then use the same as second button, trace button, number seven. And then input lower limit enter and then input upper limit and enter and then your calculator gonna be says the exact area of this so this is a calculator section problem again all right it's kind of basic concept if you understand basic concept right how to find this area under the curve with the x-axis use integral if the graph is above the x-axis integration value is equal to area what if the graph is under the x-axis uh, you have to change the sign, right? The integration value is going to be negative if the graph is under the x-axis, but area should be always positive. Yeah, think about that, okay? Go to next. Uh, it's polar coordinates, okay? So, I will serve, I don't serve that example 3 today because it will be the only part I will explain about the polar coordinate more. So today's video is done here. Okay, everybody watch this video and then understand concept how to find the area and then how to find the area between two curves as well. Okay, I'm not going to explain the polar part. I'm going to explain, I'm going to give you one more example about 
uh, able to be into curves now. Really basic, in basic examples. I made right now the example here. There's two graphs, y equals mm, negative x squared plus six. Another graph, y equals two, mm, just x, y equals x. And then I wanna find that uh, bounded area by these two graphs. Bounded area by these two function graph. Okay. So I'll draw this function graph, okay? It's easy to function, so it's a basic function. Negative x squared plus six looks like this. Opens down parabola, right? And then y equals x, graph is this. So I'm asking you, what is the area between these two curves? To solve this problem, you have to find that intersection point first. These two points. So, how can you find the intersection point of two functions? Let those two functions equal to each other. So solve this equation, which means x squared plus x minus 6 equal to 0. So x plus 3 and x minus 2 equal to 0. So x equals negative 3 and 2. So this is negative 3 and 2. So to find that it's bound the reasons area of use integral. The boundary reasons area is actually the area between two curves from negative three to two. So from negative three to integral negative three to two, higher function minus lower function, right? This is a parabola function is parabola is kind of higher function in this case, and then that linear function, straight line, is a lower function, right? So negative x squared plus six, this higher function minus lower function, whole things, dx. So integral negative three to two, negative x squared minus x plus six, dx. Find that indefinite integration value, okay? Find the indefinite integration value, which is negative one-third x cubed minus one-half x squared plus six x from negative three to two. Plug in top number, so plug in two for x, negative one-third times eight, eight over three minus one-half times four, two plus 12, that is the function, yeah, the value when I plug in 2. And then minus, plug in negative 3, negative, negative numbers cubed is positive number, right? So it's positive 9. And then negative 9 over 2, minus 18. Okay, it's 10, 10 minus, so 30 minus 22 over 3, this first part, 22 over 3. And the second part, negative 9, negative 18, negative 27, 27 over 2. 27 over 2. If you calculate this, it's going to be answers, right? So it's kind of simple math. I'm not going to calculate that now. So you can calculate for yourself. Just I'm going to explain how to find area between two curves today. So I'm not going to explain polar curve part because that part's the BC part. Yeah, I'm going to explain it later. Okay, if I have a chance to explain that, I'm going to explain it later in the next video, maybe. Okay, I keep solving that example problem and I keep explaining about application, especially area parts in the next video again. Thank you so much for watching my video and click like and subscribe and turn on the notification. Thank you again. Bye-bye.